Energy Saving Devices for EEXI Improvements This presentation will cover six parts as shown on this slide. First of all, you need to know how energy saving devices, so-called ESDs, are categorized. According to MEPC1 Circular 815, ESDs are classified as Category A, B, and C according to the terms that the device contribute to the EEXI formula. For example, the devices that can increase reference velocity are in Category A, and the devices that can improve main engine energy efficiency are in Category B, and the devices that can improve aux engine energy savings are in Category C. In addition, the categories are subdivided into Category B1, B2, or Category C1, C2, according to the ESD's weather dependency. ESDs in each category will be explained in detail in the next slides. So first, Category A. ESDs in Category A are some technologies that can improve the speed power performance of the ship which means this device can increase the reference speed for the fixed reference power. Here, ESDAs cannot be separated from the overall performance of the ship. These devices have some advantages in that they are relatively inexpensive, simple to install, and require a short engineering period compared to other ESDs. However, it is rather difficult to expect a dramatic improvement in the EEXI rating because these effects are reflected as reference speed, but the speed is in proportion to the cube root of power saving ratio. For example, if you install ESDA, which can save 10% main engine power, you can expect about 3.5% decrease of EEXI rating. It may be a little bit disappointing that an ESD with 10% efficiency only lowers the EEXI by 3.5%, Interpreted more positively, from the perspective of securing the available speed within the EEXI regulation, for example, if we assume a particular speed power curve of a ship like this, here is reference power normally 75% of MCR. If we check the EEXI requirement for every point on the curve like this, it is shown as green if the EEXI requirement is satisfied, and red if it is not satisfied. Then we can find an intersection point of red and green. Here, at point A, this is the optimized EPL level of the original ship, which means the ship cannot operate above this level. However, some ship owners may require a higher ship speed for some reason, such as contracted speed with shipper. Then the ESD should be considered. Here, if we consider ESD, which has a 10% main engine power reduction effect, the curve can be expressed like this. Then, here is point B0, which has 3.5% lower EEXI than point A. But B0 is not optimal point for this ship. I mean, for this ship, the maximum speed while satisfying EEXI is here, point B. Then, point A and B has the same EEXI value and point B has 5% more margin than point A in terms of speed and power. So the 10% of ESD makes 5% of velocity margin. Again, this is simplified calculation to explain the concept of ESD and EPL, and the detailed numbers may be different. Now I will briefly introduce ESD as commercialized on the market. A bulbous bow retrofit can reduce the wave-making resistance. The vortex flow control fin can reduce hull's frictional resistance. Hull coatings can also be another option. The coating can contribute to reduce the frictional resistance of the hull. As you can see, these are some techniques to reduce a ship's resistance. Now I will introduce propulsion improving devices, so-called PID. There are so many PIDs on the market. These devices are designed to be installed near the propellers or near the rudder in order to increase propulsion power. Some devices prevent propulsion loss due to rotational flow occurring behind the propeller. For example, swirl recovery vanes, pre-swirl stator, and contra-rotating propellers. 
while rudder bulbs and propeller boss cap fins can prevent the generation of a hub vortex behind the propeller, which can reduce propeller's energy loss. Rudder fins can also convert the lift force to thrust and increase power performance. Continuing to look at the propulsion improving devices, both the NPT and CPT propeller are direct changes to the propeller. Similarly, a propeller nozzle and duct which is installed near the propeller helps to improve propulsion power by controlling the propeller inflow. Now, ESD Category B. The ESDs in Category B are technologies that can reduce the propulsion power and can be treated separately from the overall performance of the ship, which means those devices can be turned on and off. Unlike ESDA, ESDB can reduce the EEXI rating almost proportional to the power saving rate because ESDB's power reduction terms are directly reflected in the numerator of EEXI formula. But the drawback is that these devices are rather expensive and require a long engineering time. Examples of ESDBs commercialized on the market are an air lubrication system and wind assistance system. The air lubrication system sprays air bubbles at the bottom of the ship, which changes the fluid density in the boundary layer, thereby reducing the frictional resistance of the ship. This device is applicable only to ships with a flat bottom and small drought, because it is effective only when the bubble sheet is continuously maintained at the bottom of the hull. A wind assistance system describes a device that can increase propulsion power by using wind. For example, rotors, sails, and kites. The effectiveness of any wind assistance system is dependent on the environmental conditions, so the weather effect is also included in the EEXI formula as F effective. Now, ESD Category C. The ESDs in Category C are technologies that can generate additional electricity. The ESDC can also reduce EEXI rating almost proportional to the power saving rate. But these devices are also very expensive and require a long engineering time, and few have a proven track record. Examples of ESDCs which are commercialized and on the market are waste heat recovery systems and solar cells. A waste heat recovery system generates additional power from wasted thermal energy, such as exhaust gas and cooling water. Solar cells also make additional electric power from solar energy. This table shows general performance of ESD. The data was provided by Hyundai Global Service. General performance of ESD are well classified by the position where the ESD will be installed and ship types. It should be notified that power saving ratios shown in these tables are not guaranteed by classification society. The performance of each ESD should be verified through appropriate verification method. So, in conclusion, if you want to install an ESD, you should first decide on your marginal chartering speed, and then you can check the required power saving ratio you have to make through the ESD. It will require a number of EEXI calculations. Then you will be able to select an appropriate ESD considering the COPEX verification cost and payback time. In the worst case, it may be necessary to abandon the current ship and build a new ship with higher energy efficiency. Thank you for watching our video and our experts would be very happy to further answer any questions when you contact us via email or through our KR website.